My entitled aunt invites herself to our family vacation, despite nobody wanting her there. A little background. Growing up, my aunt has always been a bit entitled and believed that my sister and I were beneath her and not fit to play with her children. My mother is also entitled to an extent, and neither really liked my husband when we first started dating. I was 19 and he was 26. Our first Christmas together we spent at my grandparents' house, and it was always the rule that the older children had to watch the younger children until they became an adult. Well, my husband made the comment that he thought my aunt was a terrible person, because she threw a fit when he refused to go downstairs and watch the other children as we were adults and didn't have any kids of our own. This didn't go over well with my aunt or my mother, and caused them to think and comment badly about him for five years. So in late 2020, my aunt started to hang around our house every week with my mother, saying that we treated her better than our own children. In 2020, our kids were seniors in high school and about to graduate, and I wanted to do something that we haven't had time or money to do as I was always working two jobs before they go off to college. I started planning a family vacation to Disney and Universal Florida as a graduation present. At this time, my husband and I were both working two jobs so that we could save up enough money to support the boys while they were in college. That way they could just focus on their schoolwork. Now at first, we did not tell anyone what we were planning for the reason coming up. However, it did get leaked to my aunt and mother what we were planning, and at first my mother was okay with it being just my children, my husband and myself going. My aunt, however, decided that she wanted a vacation too, and that she would just come with us on our vacation since we were already going. My mother soon thought that if my aunt was going, that it would be okay if she went as well. My husband and I were not okay with this, but having learned from the past, we knew they would make our lives a living hell if we didn't give in. So we agreed, and they knew that they had to pay for themselves. We were in the planning stages and decided that since our boys were so tall, it would be better if we drove to Florida instead of paying $4,000 just for all of us to fly as we didn't have that kind of money. We were looking to rent an SUV as it was going to cost $2,000 for two weeks, and we had decided that after Disney, we were going to drive around to Arizona to tour our college campus and then circle back home. While we were discussing this, my aunt decided that we will use her car. My husband and I didn't like this idea as it has a lot of wear and tear on that vehicle, but she insisted and we caved again. It was only the four of us driving down as my mom and aunt were going to fly, and I would have to pick them up at the airport since it was an hour away from our hotel. While planning the trip, I asked everyone if there was anything specific they wanted to do so I could plan for it as we had to make park reservations for each day of our stay since it was during COVID. I decided on which park we were going to based on everybody's wishes. All through this planning, my aunt says she is fine with everything and thanks me for taking all of this on. The trip starts and we drive down and I drop the kids and my husband off at Disney Springs while I go get my mom and aunt from the airport. First, their plane was an hour late and no one told me. They knew their flight was delayed before they boarded and they could have texted me. But they didn't. After I pick them up, we head to the hotel to check in and drop them off at their room. I go and pick up my family so we can get them settled in the hotels as well. My mom has mobility issues so she rented a scooter for the week and my aunt said that if she had any problems walking the parks, she could rent on there. I do want to note that I have had bad back and usually cannot walk or stand for long periods of time, but I was working on my stamina for this trip so that I wouldn't need a scooter as well since the car was not big enough to hold all of us plus two or three scooters. Also, they decided that we would drive to the parks instead of using Disney transportation since it was faster and easier for them. So the next day, we had planned to go to Universal for the day, and as we were staying on Disney property, we had to drive. Keep in mind that there were now six of us plus a scooter in this car. The first hiccup happened when we were looking for the Diagon Alley entrance so we could get our wands for the boys to use around the park. None of us had been to Universal except for my aunt, so we were a little lost and I was looking on the app trying to figure out where to go. My aunt then starts saying that I don't know what I am doing and asks, Do you know where you are going? I reply that as this is the first time I have ever been here, no, I don't know where we are or how to get where we are going. She huffs and puffs and starts talking bad about me and my kids. I make the comment that since she has been here before, she should take the lead and we will follow. She says no and that I am better at figuring this stuff out. Eventually, we find the entrance to Diagon Alley and we get the wands and start wandering around. She is a little huffy about the fact that I stood up to her but I ignore it and just try to have fun. 
There were a few rides we wanted to go on, but they couldn't so we split up after lunch. My husband and I went one way, our kids went off in another direction and my mom and aunt go somewhere else. While we were waiting in line for a ride, my mother calls me and says that my aunt was trying to get a scooter but as the park was all out of scooters, she is going to take the car and go back to the hotel. I then told her that I have the keys. She said she brought the spare keys and that she will come back for us. I go into full panic mode as my aunt is known to ignore calls and texts and will fall asleep and not wake up until the next morning if she is worn out. I tell her that she can get an Uber or a taxi to the hotel as there is no guarantee she will return for us and it would be a lot more expensive for us to get a ride back to the hotel than it would be for her. She then states it's my car to which I replied that as we traded cars and she has mine that it is actually my car until I get mine back and that she can't just leave us stranded here. If it was in the Disney park, we would have transportation options and it wouldn't have been a big deal. As we were gearing up for a war over the car, the customer service desk called my aunt and said that they had a scooter available. She was okay with that and the whole thing with the car was dropped. I thought this was the end of it. I mean I was angry but I wanted to enjoy our vacation. However, this was just the beginning. The next day we are in the Disney parks and I sent the boys off to have fun since it looked like they were going to be stuck with my mother and my aunt for the duration of the vacation and I wanted them to have fun on this trip. The morning was okay but the afternoon wore on. My aunt kept making little snide remarks about how I was controlling everything and deciding where we went etc. I told her that she is more than welcome to go her own way as I only decided on which park we were going to and so this was her attitude the whole week we were in Disney. She would constantly pick at me or badmouth me to my family and even to strangers as we passed and every time I snacked back it just seemed to add more fuel to her attitude. She wanted to go to a sit-down restaurant at the as that is where we were able to get reservations. It was cool as the tables and booths are styled to look like cars and picnic tables so that it seems like you're in a drive-in. Now as we were a party of six it is a little difficult to seat us and when we were sat it was at a picnic style table. Because it was not a car style my aunt and mother threw a fit. They caused such a scene that the manager ended up caving in and finding us a car table. I was so embarrassed that I pulled the waitress aside and apologized for their rude behavior. At the end of dinner, as we were about to walk out, I discovered that neither my mom nor my aunt left a tip. The waitress was super nice and did a great job dealing with those two. I went back and added more money to the tip I left as she was wonderful. So this was how the week ended up being with them and every day after the first day my aunt would ask when we would take them back to her car, as she didn't want to drive again because it smelled bad. She did know from the very beginning that we would be gone a week longer than them due to our other plans. It is our last day in Disney and I had made a reservation for a character dinner that my aunt requested, but in these COVID times everything is socially distant and the characters no longer come up to your table. They were there and they did interact with each guest so they could get pictures and such. I had explained this to both my mom and my aunt and asked if they were okay with that. They said they were however they complained the whole time about how they didn't get to hug Mickey or Pluto and again they failed to leave a tip for the server who was bending over backwards to make sure we had enough of everything but since they couldn't hug the characters it was the worst meal they ever had. I was fed up with them at this point and after we were done eating and paying and after I had left the biggest tip I'd ever given the boys my husband and I leave to go ride a couple of rides before we go back to the hotel. There was one ride that my mom wanted to go on with us but she didn't communicate that to me and we didn't know and went on the ride without her. We met up with them when we got off the ride and she was livid. We said we were willing to go on again as there was no line and we liked it but she said she just wanted to go back to the hotel. The next day I drove them to the airport in silence and dropped them off. I cannot tell you how relieved I was to see them go. I later found out that my aunt had left my mother in the airport to get to the gate on her own in a wheelchair with her luggage. My aunt had the tickets on her phone so I don't know how my mother would have been able to board the plane if she hadn't caught up to her thanks to a traveling mother with kids. After they left we continued our trip to Arizona. Our vacation lightened up and my husband and I started having fun and we thought that would be the end of it until we got home. Again we were so wrong. Every day about two to three times a day my aunt would text my husband. She would not contact me at all and ask when we were giving her car back and he would tell her the same thing we told her from the beginning. When we got to the border of Colorado and Omaha we did start to get a bit worried that she might report her car stolen which would have cost me my job. Thankfully she didn't go that far. After we got home we detailed the car and filled the gas tank up so that it was much cleaner than it was when she gave it to us and she wouldn't have anything to complain about. 
The next morning we took her car back and picked up mine. When we arrived my uncle came out to the house and just stood there with his arm crossed and didn't say a word to me. Just stared at me like he thought I was going to try and get past him or do something to my aunt. I knew then that she had been telling everyone in the family how I mistreated her. I don't know what my uncle thought I was going to do but I guess I didn't do what he expected because he stood there with a surprised look on his face. I just wanted to leave and go home so all I did was hand her the keys and she hands my husband my keys and then we get into our car. The minute I get into my car I was livid. It is trashed and only has a quarter of a tank of gas. I gave it to her clean with a full tank of gas mind you. That night my aunt sent a text to my husband thanking him for cleaning the car and had to admit that it was cleaner than it was when she gave it to us. As we were leaving my aunt's house my husband turned to me and said yeah I was right 20 years ago this lady is a terrible person. To this day that side of my family does not talk to me and I am okay with that. My mother is still super upset at how my aunt and uncle treated me and has not voluntarily talked to me if she can help it. In the future we've decided that if we tell the family what we are doing we are going to tell everyone that it will be just the four of us and no one else will be welcome. This was the first major family vacation we had since the boys were born and my aunt and mother ruined it for us. At least my kids had fun since I wouldn't let them be dragged down by their drama. Oh man these people are way nicer than I would have been. I would have cut them off from the get-go. I cannot believe they endured that trip with these two people. That must have been an absolute nightmare, and as it was described, oh my goodness, I cannot imagine going through that. Kudos to them for having way more patience than I would have. Am I the jerk for trying to set boundaries with my mother-in-law before she splits up me and my partner? My partner and I have been together for seven years. My mother-in-law has always had an issue with overstepping boundaries. She was a single mom to my partner who is an only child and she has never really let go of the fact that her child is now with someone else. Even when he has tried to push back she just eases off and then creeps back in inch by inch. When we first started seeing each other I used to think it was odd but sweet that his mom still made his lunches for work and cooked his tea if she was over at his house. She also did his laundry. He said she never taught him how to do his own washing or to use an iron so I ended up having to teach him instead. His mom still does these things. After I moved in I realized his mom was over every day. She would come over whether we were home or not as she had a key. She would tidy around the house and go into every room. She would move my things and take my dirty laundry. I would tell her not to and she would acknowledge me and then just do it anyways. Over the years this has escalated. I've told her countless times to stop but she says she's trying to be helpful and we're so busy. I'm not a confrontational person so I say I appreciate the sentiment but I'd rather she just didn't. What I really want to say is that I'm 35 and I don't appreciate anyone interfering with my things in my house that I paid for. The situation isn't helped by the fact that she looks after our toddler here once or twice a week when we are both at work. During those times she will meddle with laundry, move things around in our bedroom, go into rooms in the house that she has absolutely no need to go into. She will move things around in my wardrobe and drawers including my underwear. She has even taken items belonging to my child that I've bagged up for charity and hidden them in the attic and then reassembled them and brought them back into the house. We have security cameras and I have caught her coming into our house when we're out and staying for hours meddling with things until somebody comes home. I have had discussions with her about this and everything else but she just dismisses them and walks away. So I usually end up texting her asking her to stop doing these things and she will read but never reply. Recently we found out we were expecting again following two miscarriages. It's early days so we are keeping things very quiet. My family doesn't know about the miscarriages. I've been keeping my prenatal vitamins and a spare pregnancy test in my underwear drawer under something so it won't be seen. This morning I opened my drawer to find she's been rummaging in it yesterday as the test and vitamins have been disturbed. I want to scream and cry and tell her to never come back. I feel like I have no privacy in my own home. The pressure is making me ill and causing a huge rift between me and my partner. Unfortunately, I can't tell her to get out and never come back as she has an incredible bond with my daughter and my partner would never abandon his mom as she has nobody else. We also cannot afford wraparound childcare outside of nursery hours without her so she has to have a key. I've decided I'm going to see her face to face today and try and have that discussion about boundaries and overstepping and I want it to be the last time we need to have that conversation. I'm personally very afraid of confrontation. 
How do I deliver a statement which is strong but not inflammatory? Honestly, I think maybe if the daughter was put at the grandmother's house, this might solve some problems. Also, it sounds like you need to change some locks. If your husband is legitimately this weird and doesn't want to keep his mother out of his house, then you need to have a serious conversation with him. This is obviously bothering you and he needs to step up and do what's right and the right thing to do would be to support you. There's no reason for you to feel like you can't hide anything in your house. So my opinion, drop your daughter off at her house and change your locks. And the fact that this has been going on for seven years is about six years and nine months too long for me personally. I think you just gotta put your foot down for both your husband as well as your mother-in-law and tell them both that this is how it's gonna be. My ex-boyfriend is using photos of me online to catfish strangers. I broke up with an abusive partner last summer, and it was very messy. He did some really weird messed up stuff. The police were even involved. He refused to leave me alone until he ended up in jail for a bit. I believe he's still on probation and legally he's not allowed to contact me. One of the many weird things he did was use my photos online and go to different social media or dating apps just to try and get people he can hook up with. I mean, he would say these really random, disgusting, creepy things to these random people online. I don't use dating apps and Reddit is my only social media profile. I only found out because someone I know came across his profile. Apparently, he was doing it when we were together as well. He admitted to it and stopped as far as I know. A different friend let me know they saw someone using photos of me again like this week. I assume it's got to be my ex again. Who else would it be? Obviously, I can't report the profile, but presumably there's nothing to stop him from doing it again. I don't want to contact him. Legally, he's not meant to have any contact with me, but I suppose this doesn't really count. I really want to forget this guy exists and could massively do without this weird, creepy, random stuff. It's probably worth mentioning that I never sent him any photos of myself undressed or allowed him to take such pictures. For various reasons, that's just something I really don't want to do. The photos my friends saw were regular fully clothed pictures of me. However, another of the weird things he did after I broke up with him was sending me some photos and video clips he took without me knowing. So he has access to at least some photos like that. I should also be clear that I don't actually know this is him. I have no proof other than he's done it before and who else would it possibly be? Has anyone had to deal with this kind of situation? Is there anything I can do? I'm not sure how seriously the police would take it given the lack of proof and the fact that no one's immediately in danger. Though the fact he's already on probation probably helps, I guess. What do I do? Honestly, I would report this to the police. You gotta get something on record that this guy is absolutely violating your privacy and using your image as some ways to hook up with people even if it's just being a catfish situation. There are ways to contact social media platforms where they can probably pull like IP addresses or their data or their location and probably figure out exactly what's going on. There's nothing scarier than someone impersonating you online and I really hope this lady finds the solution she needs so that she can move on with her life and get away from this weirdo. Today I messed up by telling my mom I got a piercing and me and my dad kept it a secret for five years. She's not happy. I grew up in a very strict household. My mother was always the one to say I couldn't go out after a certain time. I had to be home by a certain time. I couldn't have tattoos and piercings. She has also tracked my location since I was about 16 and continues to do so now, but that's another story. Just to give some background. When I was 17, I expressed to my mother that I wanted a piercing. We had several conversations where every point I made was smacked down with a no, you're not allowed one. This continued until I was 19 and I moved away from home for university. At this point, I decided to get the piercing, but I didn't tell my mother. I knew she would react very badly and I feared confrontation and being shouted at slash yelled at. I never argued with her because quite frankly she did and does scare me. I did however tell my dad. He had piercings when he was younger and he was far more laid back about them and tattoos in general. He had no problem with me getting it. Fast forward to today. I've always had trouble opening up to my mother about my issues, but today she actually helped me to talk about something I'm struggling with. We were having a really good bonding session and talking about being rebellious teenagers and how she rebelled but I didn't and then I decided to tell her about the piercing five years later. Surprisingly, at first she was okay with it. I put the piercing in to show her and she didn't like it but said it's none of her business now that I'm almost 25. Then she asked if my dad knew. 
This is where I messed up. I was so relieved that she was being so good about it. I said yes without thinking. She blew up. She is furious that my dad didn't tell her and kept it from her all this time. According to her, her ex-husband lied to her when they were together and she said her and my father didn't keep secrets from each other. She brought up the fact that when I came out to her she told my father the same night and talked to him about it saying they talk about everything and she can't believe he would keep something like this from her. I also told her not to tell my father which she did anyway if that's relevant. I've never seen her react like this to anything. So now I'm left absolutely devastated that I've caused this and that I've potentially caused irreversible damage to their marriage and relationship all because I was too scared to tell her about my piercing when I was younger. What do I do? First off, this is really not your fault for not telling them. You obviously were afraid of talking to your mom. And second off, this is a crazy overreaction. It'd be different if he was hiding some deep dark secret that actually affects their marriage. It seems like the mom in this situation is just reaching for anything she can to be offended. Like maybe there's something else going on between her and her husband that's not being told about in this story. But for the mom to be upset that the dad didn't tell her about their daughter getting a piercing is kind of weird to me. I wouldn't feel bad about this. You didn't do anything wrong. You're living your life. And obviously you didn't tell her because you were afraid she was going to freak out. And if anything, that speaks volumes about the mom and not about you.